pressing the transfer all prisoner button and then by simply pressing done the game is going to believe that for some mystical reason we donated Sverdorn into the castle consequently increasing our relation with the person who owns the castle and that actually gives us a whole bunch of charm oh my god I just got paid 52 grand <laughs> okay hello there ladies and gentlemen welcome to Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord a game where you must lead a ragtag peasant army climb your way through the ranks maybe fight for a king or become your own king and conquer the entire world the way in which you can do this is pretty much entirely in your own power you could become a fearsome warrior or wealthy trader or in today's case we're going to be bypassing all of the natural core gameplay loops to create the most charismatic being in the universe that's right he's going to be the most handsome bugger alive as we take a charisma build to its logical extremes and naturally also become the wealthiest and most powerful being in the entire galaxy by just oozing charisma everywhere that's right i'm making a character much like myself <laughs> aren't i amazing but no today we're starting a brand new campaign we're going to be creating the most beautiful man alive and then i'm going to be showcasing quite a few spicy exploits in this game in order to gain true and total glorious power by playing it in a way the developers seriously did not intend so make sure you sat back relax you have a nice warm cup of yorkshire tea in hand and if you're feeling especially fantastic you can even like the video now let's dive into a new game so first things first we need to pick a culture now two of these are ridiculously overpowered the empire and the vlandians however currently the vlandians are completely and utterly busted because of this glorious exploit as a result we're going to be playing them because they're completely cheesable so let's create our glorious vlandian hero who needs to be the most charismatic looking person in the universe so i'll be back in a second once i've made him and here he is ladies and gentlemen i've created him the most handsome being in the universe i'm of course talking about handsome squidward who is kind of hard to replicate in this game given the fact that there is no bright pink colored skin tone but trust me this is him we made part of his face blue at least now he is the most handsome physically attractive specimen in this entire known universe and naturally we're going to make him an absolute giant oh look at this beefcake he's huge he's ripped he's jacked and guess what he's super charming so let's go release him into the wider world he was of course born into a family a family of a baron's retainers because he's going to start with that extra attribute point in social skills he was known for his way with people such a charming young lad handsome squidward was look at that little weird goblin when he was also a child he sold produce at the market look at the boy he looks great he looks happy then when he transformed into weird squid trek um yeah we're gonna say he served with a baron that seems great we're gonna be famous for how well we treated people lovely but then here we are in the modern day and age with our brother who looks just like us and we're going to effectively escape from some bandits so let us choose our name it is of course squidward oh we're going to be glorious here we are with squidward's brother nogand of course very very famous um anyway we're just gonna skip the tutorial because we can and that means we need to of course make our house we're going to be of course the handsome house full of handsome charming beautiful people which means we need a handsome coat of arms as well it's going to be a bright pink love heart because doesn't that just inspire love and happiness ah yes friendship we've made it we're into the world of bannerlord now we have a few very interesting tasks we have to do at the start namely in order to actually pull off this exploit we need to achieve a clan tier of one in order for us to do that we're going to need to actually gain some renown 45 renown to be exact in order to do that i'm going to be taking squidward around and joining every single tournament i can find inside major cities and turning him into not only a very powerful man but also an incredibly well trained one also over the majority of the game i'm going to be trying to make my way over to vlandia so that i can join them in order to make this exploit all the more glorious anyway i'll be back in a moment once i've improved myself well we've made it to the final round of our first ever glorious tournament uh, which is of course going absolutely fantastic the final round is of course always the easiest you just walk at someone wait for them to pick their attack pattern and then just bonk them on the head a whole bunch of times uh, it's nice and easy the ai doesn't really have a counter for just uh, head bonking beyond uh, more bonking so um bonking solves everything and squidward yes he is covered in blood but we love him nonetheless as he's a glorious champion today we've gained some armor some renown and some money and we're going to take our winnings and just quite simply gamble them away at the next place as we've got more tournaments to do baby okay ladies and gentlemen we're back it's day 25 of our adventure and squidward the handsome is greater than ever i've won a huge quantity of tournaments and we're about to even enter another one seriously check out the leaderboard we're in 28th position having won six tournaments and we're about to win our seventh so let's go let's jack up our bet money throw 
ourselves in and oh it's the swingy blades. These are great fun because just wait for your friend to get close, swing at them, oh, and it's whoever hits first immediately wins. We'll bet on this round again and let's go. Oh wow, yes, that's 79 damage. Oh yes, and that's our team with a flawless victory through to the next round. All right, final round, let's go. Ah, uh, it's the swingy sticks of death again for your friend to get close and swing, oh, and swing, and swing, and swing, and that's it, we win. Lovely, that's another tournament victory for us. We're even closer to pulling forward into upgrading our clan rank. We're just a few more tournaments away from total glorious victory and maximum charm. It's now day 34, we're level five, and guess what, I've got some great news. We've achieved clan tier one. Now this is where things start getting perfectly balanced. Now, step one, we need to make our way over here to the north, because guess what, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be joining Vlandia as a mercenary. Because being a mercenary is actually the most powerful position anyone in the known universe can be. Because sure, you could be a lord and own land and control stuff and do things, but actually it's much, much, much more viable to just quite simply be a mercenary and exploit everything. The reasoning is simple. Being a mercenary means you get paid for having influence. How do you get influence? Well, there's a whole bunch of ways it can happen, but one of them is just by quite simply being charming. That's right. If you go right the way here to the end of the charm tree, for every five skills above 250, you get plus one influence per day, which gets quite ridiculous because you just start printing money out of thin air. But then again, this isn't the only skill which is completely broken by going above 200. Take, for example, medicine, where for every two skill points above 200, your troops get plus one hit point. This effectively turns your troops into immortal god soldiers. Now that's perfectly balanced. Or what about for every skill level above 200, you can get a plus 0.5% increase in tax revenue. That's right, that's a plus 50% increase in tax. That seems fair. <laughs> oh god. Anyway, we're gonna become a mercenary. I think we can do that by just talking to this random lord here, so um, that's exactly what we'll do. Hello there, Baroness. I'd love to join your kingdom. That's right, I wanna serve as a mercenary. Every time I murder a group of their enemies, I get 110 gold, but actually that's just um, completely useless. We're here just to make money. Now, step one of our exploit, we can actually pull off right here in Ormondfard Castle. Yes, who doesn't love Ormondfard Castle? It's personally my favorite castle. Now, we can gain access to this castle because we're a mercenary of Landia. And now that we're in the castle, we could go to the Lord's Hall and have a chat, or alternatively, we can go down to the dungeon where Sverdorn is hiding. That's right, he's a captured noble who was being captured in this ongoing war and has been dumped off into this castle as some kind of naughty child to await his eventual ransom. Now, because we're a mercenary, we can go into the prisons of our faction and we can even donate prisoners. There's just one issue. I haven't got any prisoners to donate, but that's okay. I don't need to donate prisoners because by pressing the transfer all prisoner button and then by simply pressing done, the game is going to believe that for some mystical reason, we donated Sverdorn into the castle, which we just quite simply didn't do, but the game's going to believe we did, consequently increasing our relation with the person who owns the castle, and that actually gives us a whole bunch of charm. 16 skill points, in fact. Oh my, that is actually insane. Uh, you'll notice by also donating that prisoner, we gained four influence out of thin air, which is quite interesting because remember, ladies and gentlemen, we get paid in influence. Anyway, we're going to just repeat this process a few times to get our charm up to, oh yes, that's right, 106. Now it's 112. Now it's 117. Oh yes, 122, and now also 127. We are just quite simply standing in a castle saying, hey, I've got a present. It's this dude who's already in a cell. Look at him. I donated him to you. And for some reason, there's just a lord somewhere off in the distance who's getting gradually more and more happy that we've done what we've just done. Anyway, we're going to repeat this process just a few times. And the reasoning is simple. We want to reach max relations with the dude who owns this castle. And well, bam, we've achieved that. Anyway, it's time for us to leave the castle. Everyone at this castle absolutely loves us. So we're going to move on to the next castle because hopefully there's going to be more prisoners there. Now there is one prisoner at this castle. Is he a high value prisoner? I imagine there's a chance. Let's go to the dungeon. It's this dude. He owns the castle. Nice, right. So we're going to say that, hey, we donated him. We of course didn't, but every time we do this, we can gain a whole bunch of influence. As you can see, we have 70 influence. We do this, wha-bam, we gain 14 influence each time we do this. 14 influence, that's a fair bit of money. Anyway, we've done this a bunch. We are now up to 165 influence. And uh, the next time we have an influence tick over, you're going to notice that we're going to start making 
making a lot of money because we're going to lose 34 influence and that influence is going to be turned straight into gold. Oh, and anyway, we got paid for being a mercenary. We got 4,000 gold for what was a loss of 30 influence. That is very, very, very jazzy indeed. We also just did a fight against some little bandits there and that actually gave us free influence, which is nice, but that actually took time and also I had to look at the computer. And wouldn't it just be great if I didn't have to do that? Now, the process of actually achieving the max level of charm is going to take a while, but magically using macro script, I'm going to be able to speed up this process massively. So I'll be back in a little bit once I've run a whole bunch of macros. Okay, I've got my macro set up and running. If you want a little look at um, what this is, it's pretty interesting. Uh, basically, I just press the one key and uh, the mouse just moves around the screen, double clicking, and there's a two second wait between each of these actions. Now, um, the game is effectively playing itself. And as you can see in the bottom left hand corner, we're gaining an incredible amount of charm. This is because every time we do this action, our relation is being increased with a character who owns this castle. This is very spicy because we've already achieved max friendship with them. But for some reason, we can just repeat this indefinitely and gain true, glorious, total power. Anyway, I'll be back in a little while. Okay, we've done it. We've achieved maximum level of charm, 333. We've achieved so much charm that in fact, we've entered the castle of the area that we've been doing this exploit. And this is Moriana. Now, Moriana has never ever met us in her entire life and yet has 100 relation to us. She thinks Squidward is the greatest man in the known universe, the most attractive and her most beloved friend. And she also has absolutely no idea who he is. I'm gonna say, my name is Squidward, madame. May I ask your name? I know your name. I heard that you pledged allegiance. Ah, oh, yes, lovely. Uh, but remember, if you betray us, it'll be the biggest mistake you ever make. And yet she absolutely loves us. Anyway, I'm gonna be able to say, hey, I wish to profess that I'm your most ardent admirer. Now, this allows me to try and start seducing her using her a whole bunch of complicated games. But the advantage I have is that my charm is so high, I have a 100% chance of success. Oh, yes, I'm such a daring and charming man. And then, wabam, another 100% chance of success. I'm just like an and another one. It really is as easy as that, ladies and gentlemen. Every single person in the universe is going to fall in love with me just by hearing me. Now, because we've done this exploit so many times, you'll see we have 2,065 influence lying right there. And also we gain 16 influence per day due to our immortal charm. This is uh, because our charm is absolutely maxed out. As you can see, we just gain influence for doing nothing. Now, this influence could be used for a whole bunch of things, maybe in an empire, we could use it to pass laws, changes, or in our case, as we're a mercenary, we just get given money out of thin air. Oh my god, I just got paid 52 grand. <laughs> okay, yeah, so we lost about 400 influence and that got converted into 52 grand. That is more money than we've seen this entire game so far. 52 grand, that's gonna basically fully kit us out. Now, because I want to have infinite money, that means we're gonna make our way over to this castle here. And the reasoning is simple. This castle has a better dungeon because it has Roland in here. Now, Roland makes more influence every time I quote unquote donate him. So we're going to be donating Roland a lot and consequently gain large quantities of influence to be turned into infinite money. So I'll be back in a bit. Welcome back everyone. As you can see, some time has passed. We now have 112,000 influence. This is more influence than we should ever realistically get. Bearing in mind we're only meant to get a handful of influence per battle and our immortal charm gives us 16 influence per day, which is actually very useful. The the fact that we have 112,000 influence from repeatedly donating prisoners to this castle here uh, might potentially imbalance the game. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, quite simply, all we have to do is wait and see what happens when 22,400 influence is taken away from us, because the answer is pretty spicy. We're going to make a lot of money, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, a lot of money. How much? Well, we're going to make 2.8 million gold, and that is simply because we have so so much influence that the game is going to give us huge amounts of money. At the same time, we're getting an additional 369,000 gold just because of our culture, meaning we gain increased money from being a mercenary. But how much more money do we gain from actually messing with the prisoner? Well, it's quite simple. As you can see, we're going to make 2.835346 million gold, which is quite good. But if we were to donate a prisoner and gain a little bit more influence, that's well over an additional 300 gold gold that we're now making just from donating this prisoner. Anyway, we're going to leave him be and uh, we're going to just quite simply go on 
our adventure again, but this time we're going to frequent a town and actually kit out all of our companions with a whole bunch of loot because uh, we just got a whole bunch of money. Look at that, we have 2.9 million in the bank and we're going to make another 2.2 million tomorrow as well, so we're doing rather well for ourselves. All right, and there we go, for 87,000 gold we've just kitted ourselves out and upgraded all of our men. Anyway, our small private armed forces is starting to look more and more formidable on the field of battle. It just needs a few more improvements and then trust me, it's going to be ready for some mighty, mighty things. Ah, now I've been wooing this dude's daughter for like the last uh, couple minutes because naturally I succeed with every single persuasion check and uh, he's our closest friend. I'm gonna say I wish to discuss the final terms of my marriage with your daughter and guess what? He's totally up for it and uh, basically I could just give him money until he accepts. How much money for his daughter? 80,000? Is, is that seriously fine? Could I lower it to 4,000? Okay, I can. Can I lower it to just 200? Yes. What about 24? No, that's that's too low. But 224 for your daughter is completely fine. Right, well, there we go. Sure. Wabam. Done. <laughs> it's the cheapest marriage I've ever seen in this game. Oh, God. Well, hey, we now have a wife. Uh, that's great. She can fight with us. So let's go pick her up from the castle. Oh, my goodness. She is decked out to hell. Check out her loot. Jeez. It looks a lot better equipped than Squidward, that's for sure. Oh, no. It looks like we've just gone toward Britannia. Right. Right as we were heading into uh, Sturgeon Territory. Uh, this is about to get very spicy. So, what can we do to mess with people on the front line? We're going to force the notables to give us recruits. Yes, and some militia want to come out and fight us because we're ransacking their village and forcing their population to serve us. How close-minded of them to not realize that serving Squidward is the greatest honor anyone could have. Oh, no. The horses are trying to kiss each other. We're in the middle of a battle, guys. Look, I know Squidward is such a handsome dude. He inspires love in all scenarios, including on shields, but still, this is too much. Anyway, we've got 18 peasants wandering towards us, and uh, we have a great line of crossbow boys who, guess what, can do some pretty spooky things. And so we unleash all of our lovely sharpshooters. Doesn't matter that you have a militia, because your militia is not as cool as crossbow boys. Right, I'll just simply clean up all of their archery boys. There we go. All of their archers are now dead, so I can just quite simply lead the infantry on a merry goose chase, whilst they get absolutely decimated by our crossbows. Oh yes, this is fair. This is completely fair. Well, that's glorious total victory. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Some time has passed and our most charming character ever has gained uh, even more influence. How did we do it? Well, we quite simply went inside this castle because for some reason it's where all of the AI lords have been dumping their prisoners. And guess what? It's a fantastic farm for influence. Every single time we supposedly donate prisoners, we gain about 25 influence. And so I left my PC running for quite a while doing this over and over again and made a fantastic amount of money. Nonetheless, I think it's time that we actually stop being a mercenary and instead convert ourselves into being a lord. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to go find the king wherever he is. So I'm going to go visit him and try and become a lord. Oh, there he is. We found our king. Our king is leading an army of 14 men. What the hell? Oh my goodness. Well, he absolutely loves us. Well, who do we have here? Would you care to tell me your name? Well, you absolutely think we're the greatest. So hello, I'm Squidward. Now we have been given a task by King Derrett here. He wants us to take the Abcoma Castle and he's willing to give us 20,000 gold for this, but this is actually a terrible idea. Uh, I don't need to do that because, um, let's be real, taking an entire castle defended by hundreds of people for 20,000 gold d is not exactly a fair trade deal. I'm sorry, my king. So now that we actually have a place in this kingdom and we're no longer gaining infinite money because of our influence, it is time that we start trying to control land. All right, I've maxed out my new army size and I now also have two additional parties running around the map. One led by my brother over here and one led by a random follower that I've just picked up. And hopefully using these men, I'm going to be able to gain infinite power. And oh my god, there's a pack of 40 looters. That dude claimed it first, he can have it. Now the interesting thing is the looters have basically gone out of control and they are destroying a large quantity of the local lords because the poor lords don't really know what to do. Because good old Squidward here is actually level 53 just out of sheer power of gaining so much experience from charming everyone in the known universe. Right, I'm going to make my way all the way down to Tublis Castle and see if there's actually any point of us trying to fight the people to the south of us. Oh, looks like there is because there's an army of 945 dudes heading our way. Now here's the thing, I'd love to raise an army to actually defend the lands but the only people I can raise are the members of my own clan because everyone else in Vlandia appears to be completely and utterly incapable. You know what we need to do? We need to take control of someone else's land. I'm going to propose that we should take control of Jackalan. Now the interesting thing is that I can just repeatedly vote over and over again to get our liege to give us control of Jack 
Jacqueline, and the reasoning is simple. Because I am max level charm, every time we propose a decision it gets turned down, we don't actually lose any of our amazing influence. So we can propose it until it goes through, which in this case it has, and now we are the proud owners of an entire bloody city. So now we get to vote for the new owner, and we're going to naturally propose that hey, it should be me. And of course, it's going to be me, because everybody bloody loves me. So we are now the new owners of one of the most prosperous cities. Ah, hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. A decent amount of time has passed, and um, well, kind of I've decided I don't want to be part of the Vlandians anymore. Now there's a few reasons behind this. Number one, uh, I have a nice large town, one of the best towns in the entire game, in fact. Secondly, I just captured this castle for them, and then they immediately gave it to someone else, and it's now under siege. And then finally, uh, the Vlandians are at war with pretty much the entire world. They're at war with the Northern Empire, they're at war with the Western Empire, and now we're also at war with the Batanians. And I would like to say that these wars are going pretty, pretty terribly. The only reason we're doing okay at all is because I exist. The troop strength is garbage. I cannot actually recruit any of the lords to an army because all of them have so few troops, it just won't happen. Equally, none of them have any defenders. The largest amount of defenders defending any castle in this empire, excluding myself, is four. I don't know what has happened to the AI here, but they are about as intelligent as a potato that has been granted control of an entire major empire and its military decisions. Consequently, we're going to uh, leave the kingdom. Now, we know that the king is vaguely over near Hongard Castle, and so consequently, we're just going to go and uh, probably murder him. And so now I'm basically just going to start beating up all of the local lords that hate me. So there's a random dude here with 10 men. Uh, naturally, my men are just going to go and wail on him for a little bit. All right, he could be this one on the horse. So um, stab and uh, yep, I've just took his head off. Maybe he could be this one. Nope, he was the other one. Okay, well, um, let it be known that Squidward is now basically a god. The man cannot be murdered. He is one of the greatest riders any horse lord has ever seen. Oh, we do so much damage. It's just downright ridiculous. Anyway, we're going to charge in with our horses and despite the fact that these men are sat on a hill and uh, for some reason can't process our existence, they are going to be plowed down via the combined might of our glorious horsey boys. So, in comes some crossbow bolts and then to follow those up, we have the glorious cavalry charge. Ah, that went fantastically well. Ah, glorious victory. And with that, we're now at war with Vlandia and we're now going to immediately retake the city. Now the thing is, we can actually siege this settlement for as long as we like. We can pretty much gain infinite food by just going out and, you know, going shopping. But more importantly, we know that at no point will anyone ever come to actually defend this city because all of the lords of Vlandia do not have enough men to merge into an army, meaning we have total free unrestricted control to build as many bloody trebuchets as I like. Yes, this settlement is going to be mine. Right, our first trebuchet is built. It is going to start bombarding the city. Lovely stuff. Right, we've almost taken down the wall on the left side and as soon as we do we should be able just to walk straight into this city. This is largely due to the fact that the local morale of the defending forces is so pathetic. 6.7. I mean just look at that. That is just quite simply the worst. Right and the time has come ladies and gentlemen for us to lead an assault into this city. We've managed to blow up one of the walls and uh, cause a nice little bit of damage. They do have some ballistas but I mean realistically what are they going to do? And we even have a trebuchet of our own. So, yes I'm just going to auto deploy and uh, let everyone go do their thing. Dear god those uh, ballistas are actually rather powerful. Anyway straight through the breach we go. Oh we can definitely not do that on horseback. Right, I've managed to get behind the enemy troops and I'm just going to keep on swinging away because back here I can do some lovely damage. There we go. Oh yes glorious one hits for all. Doesn't matter that you have more men. My men are glorious and jazzy. Oh dear and you appear to be retreating. Is it because you have no morale whatsoever? Because I think it is. Ah glorious. Quality always beats quantity. We've only lost 14 men so far. Dear lord I have just stumbled into a pit of rangers. I think I'm going to be brought down by a crossbow bolt if I'm not careful, but that's okay, as uh, I think my damage has been done. Yep, there we go. I'm brought down by a crossbow bolt, but it's okay. We've still managed to kill 146 men. Personally, we killed 30 of those. That's a success in my books. Oh my goodness, this battle. All right, I'll just speed it on, and uh, yep, we should continue to win. Yep, there we go. It's going down quite close to 25 men versus 20, but of course, we still have the advantage. Oh, we did it. Right, that's a city that's ours. Oh, the defenders have pulled back inside the keep and are mounting a last stand. Well, sadly, I have to say, 
send my men in for that. They managed to pull it off. Glorious. We've done it. We've captured you. You're my prisoner. You're also my prisoner. You're also my prisoner. And we get even more prisoners for us to dump into a castle. Anyway, this city is now ours. The glorious kingdom of Charmtopia. It's glorious. It's majestic. And most importantly, it's ours and it's no longer Vlandian. Because I swear you could duct tape a chocolate bar to those people and they'd still manage to find a way to drop it and lose it. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's it for today's video. We've managed to become a charming god. We're beautiful. We're perfect. And my goodness, we could technically go even better. That's right. We could continue this journey. But of course, only if you want to see it. So if you want to see more adventures of the most charming man alive, then make sure to give this video a like. And why not hop on down into the comment section and pledge your undying love for the most charming being. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. As always, a huge thank you to each and every one of our amazing YouTube channel members and also our Patreon supporters for making these videos all the more possible. Seriously, thank you very much. And if you sat there wondering what video you'd like to watch next, look no further than this one on screen now, hand chosen by myself to be absolutely perfect for you. Anyway, I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have a lovely day and goodbye for now.